We hope you enjoy listening to this weekly podcast from Lifeline Church. Find out more by visiting lifelinechurch.co.uk. Okay, hello everyone. So today we've kind of run out of stuff to teach. Because we got to a point now where it's not about more knowledge, more teaching. It's about the Spirit actually doing something for us. And so we're just going to try and go through a time of really looking for the Spirit to to come and work amongst us. Um, Before we get uh, to some of the response that we want to do, because we're going to intermingle the the songs with with what we're saying today, um, I just wanted to take another minute just to reflect on some of the things that we've been teaching um, in the last couple of weeks about glorifying and I just want to make sure that we we kind of started from two weeks ago a very broad um, high view of glory and what glory means but then we've zoomed down into very uh, specific and so I just wanted to get a little bit more into the specifics of what it actually means to glorify and kind of take the mystery away from it. I was having a conversation with my, my dad the other day and he was really struggling with, uh, with his back. He'd, he'd hurt his back earlier and he was pretty fed up and thinking a little bit about the discomfort that he was in. Someone happened to knock at the door and uh, my mum had gone to answer it. And so he thought, OK, well, I, I can just go and, and rest. And so he was walking up the stairs and he got halfway up the stairs and he felt God stop him and almost say to him, you thinking about yourself, John, or are you thinking about what I want and so he stopped himself and thought okay let me just go down to to greet the person as he went down the stairs the word of God came to him and he was able to give something very specific to the person that was at the door that was glorifying God it was making that person aware of what God that what that God had an opinion that God had a thought that God was in the room that's what glorifying actually looks like when the rubber hits the road he would also tell me a, the conversation that he'd ended up having with his doctors. He'd gone to hospital just for a checkup the other day and he was stuck there for, for a huge amount of time that he wasn't expecting. But while he was there, he was sat with a couple of doctors and just got to share the gospel, share what he does for a living and why he does it and got an amazing response from people. And again, that, that's what we mean by glorifying. It's making others aware of the greatness of God bringing it into reality, into their life. Sometimes when we have conversations, it's almost like things are just... uh, We're we're throwing ideas out and thoughts out, and it's like they they tumble to the ground. And so just for for some illustrations, imagine I'm I'm just having a, a conversation and we're talking about the wife and kids, or or we're talking about schools and things like that. Conversations come and go all the time. But then there are are certain times when we might be talking and we might talk about this subject or we might talk about another subject. But then it hangs in the air. It doesn't fall to the ground. Why is that holding that there? Why is that thought or that comment stuck with me? Could it be that God is holding that up for me to see? I was in a conversation with someone the other day and they were saying to me, I'm just really hoping just to get through the last last two weeks. And it just hung in the air. I just thought, why, why is that hanging there? Could it be that God is holding this up for me to see and to make others aware of why he's holding it up? And I felt just to pray for that person that this doesn't have to be about an endurance to get through, but what if God wants to birth something through you? And it just changed the perspective of that conversation. That is glorifying because God was in the room holding something up and we just had to draw attention to it because surely the Lord was here the whole time and I just wasn't aware of it. Glorifying makes us now aware of him being there. And that can happen when you're walking and talking. There's an issue that comes up and you just have a thought Oh, I wonder, where, let me ask this question. Or you're talking to the neighbour and they talk about a sick relative. Oh, I wonder if God wants to do something here. I shared the example the other week of someone that Mark Baden works with. He said, 
whenever I've gone to a, a house of one of you lifeliners, there's just something different about you guys. That's what glorifying looks like because it's pointing people back to something that's broader and bigger than them. So over the last few months, we've been on a journey. God's taken us on this journey. Um, it actually started back in July when we were looking at harvest and how to reach the lost. And it was at that point we started to think, you know, so often in the Bible, we are reaching the lost through manifestations, examples of God working in the supernatural. It allows people to see him. Uh, we use the example of how Jesus prophesied to the woman at the well, told her about her life. Suddenly, she, it, she was brought face to face with, there's something supernatural here. I can see that you're a prophet. Well, she went deeper than that and led that whole community to Jesus. So when we were looking at that, that, coming to know God, we realised that was the first miracle that we had. To be able to see him, to, to know his salvation, we we're all beneficiaries of that first, uh, first miracle. And so as we begin to unpack that, we start to look, what are some of the other spiritual gifts that God has given us to help reveal him? Then we came back to look at, well, while we're looking at the gifts, let's not forget the gift giver. And both John and Jeremy spoke about the idea of there are many examples in the gospel where they missed the fact that the gift giver was right in front of them because they wanted miracles, they wanted their tradition. And yet he's saying, I am right here. So we never want to miss him being in the room with us. Then we started to look at how the supernatural affects the way that we can be friends. And we realised, you know what, we can't be friends to the standard that God calls us to without the supernatural. So we talked about the need to be supercharged in our friendships. And then over the last few weeks, I've talked about our mission to bring God's glory to the earth, to be part of what he's doing. Now, in reaching the lost, in being good friends and being part of his mission to fill the earth, we need the spirit to help us, to make us aware of what he's doing, to make us hypersensitive to, to what he's doing and empowering us. And it's like all those three roads have left, led us to the same cliff edge. And I've used that imagery before of coming to the edge, edge of the cliff and realising I can't get any further, but I need to go further. I can't be a friend to you the way that God's called me to be. I can't be part of you coming to see him without the Spirit doing something in me. And I can't uh, be part of his glory coming to this earth without him doing something in me. And so this is where we're at now. And we've got no more teaching to give. We have come to a cliff's edge and we are now dependent on God taking us the rest of the way. We need his empowerment. So John's going to come help us now um, and then we're going to lead into a bit of response time. Thank you, Jamie. It's an interesting thing. Uh, sometimes, the very fact that we have a doubt come into our mind is an indication that we're onto something. Why would the enemy try to get us to doubt something if he wasn't there as a reality? There would be no need to do that. And I sometimes see that, that the doubt thing <clears throat> it's one of the sure signs that we're onto something, that God is at work and God is going to fulfill his word. But of course, we have to come to that place of total reliance upon him. The recognition that we need the Holy Spirit, the recognition that this is beyond the natural, this is supernatural. This is what God gave us the Holy Spirit for. This is so that we could continue the supernatural ministry of Jesus. It's a simple and very direct reason and answer. So we expect that. We need that. We want that. And I'm convinced that as we're together today and looking to God for this, I know we're not all in the same place and it's not the normal meeting context, but God is bigger than that. And I want, therefore, and we've kind of designed things under God, to allow for this to be a time particularly of our personal 
entering in our personal response. As Jamie said, we kind of come to the end. We could go on teaching from now till Jesus comes, but frankly, we need the, the, the experience, the receiving, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. This is the encouraging thing. Do you know, do you remember we've coined that phrase, when it's raining, pray for rain? Sounds a strange thing to do, but comes out of the fact that Jesus only ever did what he saw his father doing. And we see, and we're encouraged with the evidence that God is actually anointing and leading by his Holy Spirit. A nudge here, a contact there, a thought to pray for someone, and then the opportunity to actually meet with them. We're getting quite a stream of encouraging reports of what God is doing. So we see that God is doing this, and so we want to continue it. I'm going to pick on three different Bible incidents to help us into this. But of course, it, it really does depend on your response. In 1 Kings 19, uh, we see the story of Elijah. He'd had a tough time. He was on the run. He was exhausted. God sent the angel of the Lord to, to provide miraculous food for him because he still had further to go and he wouldn't have the strength to do that journey. Eventually, takes him to this cave, which I, I don't know, my mind's eye is somewhere up a mountain. See, Elijah, at the edge of his ability, ready to die, on a journey, knowing he had nothing left, God sustaining him to take him to the point of the mountain. What was the point of the mountain? Well, many of you know the story. The Lord said, go and stand in the mountain, for the presence of the Lord is about to pass by. And you remember there's a, a wind, a hurricane, a fire, an earthquake. I mean, pretty significant things, but it wasn't that. He had to go and stand outside having come to the end of himself and just wait and the presence of the Lord came that's what I'm encouraging us to do I'm encouraging us to do that now it might seem a little odd that we're not in a meeting together you're just in the, your room but God is still there God is everywhere we're going to ask the Mark and the musicians to come and we're going to use that song waiting here for you this is a time where we come to the end of ourselves and we're recognizing we need the Holy Spirit we need what only you can bring waiting here for you will you join me come into that place however odd it seems, reckoning that, to be honest, we need the Holy Spirit. And this week, this time, that's what we're going to say. We're going to be honest before God, waiting here for you, just like Elijah had to stand for the presence of the Lord was coming. Thank you, Mark. Faith can move the mountain, let the mountain move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. With our hands lifted high. Grace. And it's you we adore, singing hallelujah. You're the Lord of all creation. You're the Lord of all creation. And still you know my heart. 
the author of salvation you loved us from the start I've been waiting here for you with a Everything you promised, your faithfulness is true. We're desperate for your presence. All we need is you. We're waiting for you. to stand for some you might want to sit for some you might want to kneel sometimes it's helpful just to move our body into a different position we're waiting here for you we're waiting for your spirit and we invite you Holy Spirit to come breathe upon us Behold our God. Throne, come let us 
Come, let us adore him. Behold, I can, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him. I don't know how many times I've heard myself saying, in these times, God is still on his throne. Come COVID, come economic meltdown, whatever, God is still on his throne. It's a very, very good thing to be in the presence of God. It's a very good thing to behold our God, seated on his throne, reigning sovereign supreme. Come, let us adore him. One of the most wonderful privileges God has given us is that we can come into a place of knowing him and adoring him. What a thrill, how wonderful it is. I think getting ready is an important thing. I'm going to come to another little Bible story. It's just, these things are so critical if we want to be moving in the Holy Spirit. Coming to an end of ourselves, just as we said about Elijah, coming, standing in the presence of God, there's a time for that. A time that is so critical and so important, beholding our God. There's a story of young Samuel and the prophet Eli, uh, Eli, or the priest Eli. And many of you will know the story. He keeps on hearing this voice and goes and asks Eli. And eventually, Eli realises it's God speaking to Samuel. And he gives him what seems like a very simple instruction that just reverberates down through the ages. He said, when you hear this voice next time, when you sense something, this is what to say. Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm turning away from other sounds and other voices and other thoughts. And by your grace, I'm listening. I'm listening to hear you. I'm listening to hear what you have to say. You know, Mark already said, I think, it was earlier on, it might seem odd, but sometimes our, the way we position ourselves, you know sometimes when we come to join together in prayer for something, we stand together. What's that? It's the fact that we're taking our whole being and saying, I am involved, I'm part of this. Again, you might feel at this time to kneel or to stand, but I'm encouraging you to enter into this. What was the instruction? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Against the background of all other sounds, Against all the noise and all the clamour, there's still a space where we, can, where we can hear God. You see, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. If you are born again, the Spirit of God, you are one of his sheep. Part of what you're equipped with is the ability to hear his voice. And right now, in the realities and the practicalities and the nudges and the, <clears throat> and the opportunities, we need to hear his voice. So come, let us take a little time right now, expecting that we'll hear God, expecting that he will give us 
maybe some task, some change of position, some opportunity to serve, someone to pray for, an action to take. We need, we need no more than Samuel needed. We need to hear, hear God. Be still, for the presence of the Lord is moving in this place. So we take that song, and Mark's going to lead us. I want you to do that because, as we said, we've come to the end. We can teach and teach and teach, but this is a time where we need to come into the application, the practice. This is the way I believe that God is leading us to do it. Thank you, Mark. Be still. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now in reverence and fear. presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he he is crowned now awesome as the sight now radiant king of light be still for the glory of the lord is shining all still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place he comes to cleanse and heal to minister his grace no work too hard for him in faith the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Let's just take again that moment. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Lord, we, we recognize all over again Without you, we can do nothing. And yet, Lord, we are, we're encouraged, we're excited, 
we're challenged by the promise that, lo, you're with us always. Lord, that you've called us and that you're sending us. And the fields are white unto harvest. Lord, you're granting opportunities that we may share the good news to those who rightfully belong to you because you died for them. Lord, we're at times overwhelmed with a sense of privilege that we can be part of your kingdom and part of your purpose. And Lord, that you would even use us to communicate your love in your life, in actions and words and opportunities to serve. We say, come Lord Jesus, we stand before you, we're here for you Lord at this time. What has he said? Let's just think for a moment. What have you seen him do? You see, as we were thinking about this, there was another scripture that caught my eye. I was just reading through. It was Paul's message to Timothy. And he said to Timothy, fan the flame. And I began to think about that. If you don't fan, if there's nothing there, there's something there in the first place. You can't just fan some bits of wood and it comes into flame. There has to be something in the first place. So I think it's a really good thing that we consider when we come to fan the flame. Not only what what has he said for now, but what has he said? How is it that you came to know him? What did he show you of his purpose? What have you seen him do? You know, there's time to kind of... It's almost like boasting about who God is and what he's like. Fan the flame of the gift that is within. What is the gift that is placed within? As much as we own own up and honour and recognise and confess that he saved us and he's filled us with his Holy Spirit and he's led us and indeed all the way up to now the Lord has led us. There are things to reflect on. There are things to consider as we listen and as we begin to fan the flame. How do we do that? It's not about shouting louder or praying longer unless God shows us. He's not trying to whip something up. It's coming back to recognise the gift which he's placed within. I urge you to do that. He saved me. He's used me. He gave me this word for a friend. He, would, he, he, he used me in a situation. Maybe I, you could say I was bound by something and he broke that addiction. He healed me. That's fanning the flame of the gift which is within. This is boasting in him. This is recognising that there's something there. We're going to take a, another song. As we do that, this is about not so much my action, this is about your action, about determining to fan the flame, to use what he's given you to do, to respond to a nudge. Yeah, sometimes you get it wrong. So what, God is still on his throne. We're not believing to get it wrong. The man who never tried anything, didn't go anywhere. So (laughs) this is about a journey believing God will take us where he wants us to go. I remember I've told you recently of times when I felt, oh yes, here's an opportunity. And yeah, I just kind of realised it wasn't. But there are other times, and I thank God for that. When I consider who I was and where I came from, The fact that he came to me, the fact that he would use me, the fact that he would actually grant to me this great salvation. Let's fan the flame because there's a gift that he's placed within.
we need to remind ourselves and rejoice in the fact that we already have something there and we're asking God to take us. Mark's going to come. We're going to take just this final time and I'm, I'm urging you to do that. Let's fan the flame. Consider the gift that he's already given. Begin to thank him for it. That God will repair us and use us in the way which he's been leading us into in these days. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. We're coming to the end of the meeting now, so we're going to wrap it up in a bit. Next week, there's going to be a 10 o'clock session for families and for um, for people before the meeting. It's a chance to worship God together. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that, Mark? Mark, no, we're just going to encourage families, especially those with younger children, to have a time from 10 till the meeting starts. We'll be doing praise, we'll be doing worship, we'll be linking it maybe also to the Advent boxes, that those families that have got those as well. So come prepared um, and come prepared to engage and have a real time of fun and praise and worship in him. Thanks. Thank you. So that's next week. As Jamie said earlier, there, there isn't anything else to teach. We've gone over everything that God has to say on this. And today's been all about accessing that, about God's Holy Spirit really equipping us.
Thank you for listening to this podcast by Lifeline Church. We hope this message has been an encouragement to you. We are a relational church with a passion to demonstrate God's love to one another and our surrounding community in real and practical ways. We believe that God has called us to have an impact on our families, our communities and our nation. We'd love to connect further with you, so please do visit our website at lifelinechurch.co.uk, on Facebook, lifeline.church.uk or Twitter at lifelineuk.com.